Today's Gospel reading emphasizes the importance of paying the temple tax, but also our Lord points out that He is the Son of the Father, He is God, so the temple is really there for Him, so He doesn't need to pay any taxes for the temple. He doesn't have to pay for the upkeep of the temple, but notice what He says in order to uh, prevent them from taking offense, you know, go and catch a fish, and the first fish that you catch in its mouth there will be a coin and use that. Uh, to pay the temple tax for me and for yourself. So our Lord doesn't need to do this because he's God, but he understands that the people don't understand or not everybody believes that he is God, so he doesn't want to cause any problems. So he goes the extra little bit. And when we think of our Lord's entire life, he was obedient to the law in its entirety. But he goes this extra bit partially to give an example, but also humbling himself. And I think this is an important message for all of us. In other words, it's not enough for us just to do the bare minimum or what's required of us. We need to go a little bit extra. We need to go the extra mile when it comes to charity or when it comes to our relationship with God. And today we celebrate the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe. And I think he's an example of an individual who kind of goes the, the extra mile, who goes beyond and above what is required of him. Hopefully you're familiar with his story. When he was 12 years old, he had a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she offered him two crowns, telling him to choose one. And it was a red crown and a white crown, the white crown symbolizing purity, the red crown symbolizing martyrdom. And he chose both of them. He wanted the extra mile. He went the extra mile, right? And so he wanted both martyrdom and, and purity, total devotion to God, total dedication to God. And as you know, he became a Franciscan, he became a priest, and um, he was eventually uh, interred in a concentration camp. And in the concentration camp, oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, that when he was still a student, he was studying in Rome. And this was in 1917, and the uh, Russian Revolution was underway. It was also the year that Our Lady of Fatima appeared in Portugal. And it was very significant, uh, you know, Our Lady of Fatima revealed that God wishes to establish devotion to her Immaculate Heart. And if you recall the earlier apparition of Our Lady in 1858 in Lourdes, Our Lady revealed herself as the Immaculate Heart conception. So we have the Immaculate Conception, 1858, 1917, God wishes to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And St. Maximilian Kolbe, he started the Militia of the Immaculata. In other words, the Army of the Immaculate. In other words, an army dedicated to Our Lady, an army dedicated to fighting against evil in the world. So when he was still a student in 1917, he was studying in Rome, and the, the Freemasons uh, had a public protest in front of the Vatican, protesting the church and claiming that they're going to destroy the church. And they had a, an, an image of Satan crushing the head of St. Michael, the reverse of our image of St. Michael crushing the head of Satan. And if you're, as I mentioned so often, you know, I encourage people to uh, read alternative news sources because mainstream media is very, very biased and you're not getting all the information that you, you, you need to. Uh, but it has been pointed out that the church has been infiltrated by the Freemasons, by homosexuals, by even Satanists, and they're within the church, by communists also, they're within the church, perhaps in very high-ranking positions, and they are intent on destroying the church. They know that they cannot destroy the church by physical persecution, by killing the, the Christians. They realize they can't do that. The more they kill the Christians and suppress them, the more they, they kind of grow. I mean, they're still trying to do that in places like China and, and North Korea, but they realize the only really way to truly corrupt the church is from within. And if you're interested in, in this topic, I highly recommend a, an encyclical by Pope Leo XIII. I think it's called Humani Generis. 
um, but it's about Freemasonry. He's got an encyclical on Freemasonry, and he talks about what they want to do. And part of what they want to do is they want to corrupt, corrupt morality. In other words, they want people to commit all kinds of sins, uh, sexual sins and all these things. So it's not surprising that we see the things that we see in today's society. And when you consider that people are going to engage in more premarital sex or extramarital affairs, of course, there's going to be more and more unwanted pregnancies, and that's going to lead to people wanting abortions. So it just it's all interconnected, right? So anyways, um, so see, Maximilian Kolbe was a witness to these things, and he was very much committed to fighting against this great, great evil. And also recall the, the apparition of Pope Leo XIII, where he saw Christ and Satan having a discussion and Satan mocking Christ and saying, oh, I can destroy the church and just give me a little bit more power, a little bit more time. And Christ gave Satan, uh, some say 75 to 100 years of greater dominion, greater authority. When that period begins, we don't know. But we are definitely living in the time of evil. And all the more reason why we need to be part of that uh, militia immaculata, right, to, to fight against evil, to be united to Our Lady, to have a devotion to the Immaculate Heart. Now, interestingly enough, with St. Maximilian Kolbe, he didn't oppose these evils, like, through political means or protests or uh, letter-writing campaigns and things like that. No. He realized the real way to fight evil is by personal holiness and spreading the kingdom of God. And this is what he did. So he, sp he tried to spread the message of Our Lady. Uh, he wrote pamphlets and, you know, uh, had people deliver them and um, people's doors and, and, you know, explaining the faith, the importance of devotion to Our Lady, all these things. But also emphasizing consecration to Christ through Our Lady. Consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Our Lady, to Our Lady. And so uh, tomorrow is the Feast of, of the Assumption of Our Lady. It's a good day on a feast day of Our Lady to do a consecration or to re renew your consecration if you've already done it. But you see, when we consecrate ourselves to God through Our Lady, and we're consecrating ourselves to Our Lady also, what we're really saying is, please watch over me. Please help me. Help me to be the way you want me to be. And that's what's going to make us the happiest. So to have this love of the Blessed Mother, who is our greatest intercessor, who will intercede on our behalf to obtain for us the graces that we need to live our lives as we ought to, and to, to ensure that we have a happy and holy death. So this is how St. Maximilian Kolbe fought against evil. And when he was in the concentration camp, there was uh, somebody who escaped. And to teach the prisoners not to escape, uh, they were going to punish the, the remaining prisoners. And so they selected 10 individuals randomly, and these individuals were to die because somebody had escaped. And so the names were called out of the 10 individuals, and one of them, he was a young man, uh, had a family, and he said, you know, I'm a family man, uh, please, you know. Uh, and Maximilian Kolbe stepped forward and said, take me in his place. And his offer was accepted. And so the other man uh, was spared. And all the other prisoners made sure that that other man who was spared, that he got out of, out of, out of the uh, concentration camp alive. And, and he did. So he was able to get back to his home. But anyway, St. Maximilian Kolbe was pace, placed in a starvation bunker with the other nine. And he kept up the morale of the other nine. In other words, they were all suffering. They were all starving. They were all dying of thirst. Some of them were drinking their, their own urine. Um, but he kept up their morale, and he would have them sing Marian hymns. And apparently, whenever somebody would look in to see how they were doing, Maximilian Kolbe was always standing, kind of leading them in, in prayer and, and hymns, or he was kneeling on the ground praying. So he kept up their morale, and near the end, they, they got tired of waiting for them all to die. I think there were about four of them still alive, and they were injected with, with a poison that ended their life. And so this is how he died. So he was a martyr for charity. He went that extra mile.
He did that little extra bit. He didn't need to stand forward. In fact, um, on formed, they have, they have a little thing on, on the saints, so uh, I looked at that this morning. And they pointed out, theoretically, he could have even avoided the concentration camp completely because his father was a German. His last name is Colby, which is a, a German name. So he could have been spared all this, but, but no, he uh, stayed steadfast in his faith and he wanted to suffer with the people of God and he wanted to give his life in imitation of Christ to save souls and in particular one individual, this family man. Uh, whose life was spared. So um, may we be inspired by his example and let us also go the extra mile in trying to bring the love of Christ to those around us. Just a brief announcement. As you know, they are doing the um, pavement work. Um, they're going to put cement instead of the interlocking stones. And today, right after Mass, they're going to be working on this area, removing the stones, so you will not be able to exit those doors. In fact, I'm going to ask Keith to uh, block off those doors um, right after I, I finish this homily. And so you will need to exit through the side doors. And tomorrow morning when you come to church, yeah, you can still park in the back, but we will prop open this door here so you can enter this door. Or if you're coming from, the, if you're walking, we'll prop open that door over there and you'll be able to enter that way into the church.